I am Sasha Varel, and welcome to MindCon. This is the Developing Modders panel, where we'll be talking to all kinds of modders about the sort of things they do, mostly modding. To my left is Pi Mar, and we're going to start with introductions. They're going to tell you who they are, what they do, and from there, we will open up questions. While they're introducing themselves, there are also two microphones in the back. Look for a red shirt if you need to find them. If you want to go ahead and ask any of the modders any questions, you'll need to go ahead and start forming a line right now. And once we're done with the introductions, we can start with the questions, and it'll be awesome. Here we go. Hello, I'm Pahamar. I, uh, I do the equivalent exchange mod, as well as I'm the, uh, the owner and the admin for the ForgeCraft server. Hello, I am Lex Manos. I write the modding API of Minecraft Forge. Hi, I'm CPW. I do FML and various other small mods, including Forge stuff sometimes. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Dan200. I made Computercraft, Billund, and QCraft. Hello, everyone. I'm Direwolf20. I do a YouTube channel all about Minecraft mods. <laughs> Hi, I'm Benematic. I write the Twilight Forest mod. Uh, that's about the only one. Thank you. Hello. Hey, this one works. Hi, I'm Austin Smith, uh, otherwise known as Laser Tester, and uh, I'm the lead developer for the, the Shabo Network, represent. <laughs> now, uh, making a lot of server side, server side mods and plugins. So. Hi, I'm Kanzo. I do, I'm a director for the HeroCraft coding team, and we do HeroCraft Online, and we do plugins such as Heroes, HeroChat, and Vault. All right, while you guys are getting lined up, we're going to go ahead and get some questions out of the way, most of the common questions that I'm sure everybody in this room wanted to ask. And all the monitors and Di uh, Dire Wolf will be answering this, of course. Uh, we're going to start with, how did you get into mods or modding? I originally got into modding after uh, hanging out with a couple other developers in uh, some IRC channels, uh, particularly Xenophobe, uh, who is the original creator of Equivalent Exchange. Um, we talked shop an awful lot, and I gave him some tips, and next thing I know, I'm, I'm writing the mod, so. I found about Minecraft from my friends, got playing with them, and they all quit did playing because they got bored, and I wanted to make it better, so. I started writing stuff. <laughs> uh, I got into modding because of those two girls over there. <laughs> um, yeah, when I, when I played, first played like a Minecraft, I did what most Minecraft players do, which is I started thinking of, of ideas, things that would improve the game. And as a programmer, and thanks to the work of people like Sarge, who makes MCP, and these guys who make Forge, I was able to start implementing some of those ideas, and eventually that led to me making computer craft. All right, well, I'm a little bit different, because I don't actually write mods, but uh, I got into playing mods early on uh, with one of the two earliest mods out there, Industrial Craft and Build Craft. And once I found those mods out there, I kind of said, like, these things are really neat and cool and I'd like other people to be able to find them. So I kind of started making videos to show people how they work and how to use them, and then it kind of just went on from there. I had been playing Minecraft for a while without doing any mods, um, but I played one of the first very early versions of the, uh, I think it was the Aether or Ether mod, and it really inspired me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. And that night, I sat down and started writing the first versions of the Twilight Forest. And then uh, I got Minecraft early in Alpha and just played it for years and years without ever installing any mods. And then I played on some servers that had some custom programming on them. And I was like, how did they do this? And then I started looking into it and had been working as a software engineer and started writing mods or well, server-side plugins. But yeah. Um, back in HMod, if uh, any of you guys remember that, I saw a lot of plugins and people were really active and I, so since I ran a server, it was more out of necessity of wanting to create unique things such as RPG plugins and so forth. So I wanted it to be different. <laughs> All right, it looks like we've already got a pretty sizable queue for questions here. We're gonna go ahead and start with the first young man right there in the blue teal shirt. Have you ever, oh. Have you ever made a mistake and then it turns out to be something really cool? Uh, 
it didn't end up being something cool, but it gave me a different idea for something else I wanted later. So not quite, but yes. Well, I was working on the rendering engine and I accidentally switched two lines of code and basically made the entire world a techno dance. <laughs> so I had fun with that for the night. I've made many mistakes, but sadly none of them have been useful. <laughs> um, when, when I did the first version of com, like computer craft, I accidentally left enabled a feature that let the computer craft programs break out of their sandbox and connect to the internet. And people started using that to make really awesome things, so I turned that into an official feature, and some of the coolest things with computer craft use that now. Every single video I make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the things I do are procedurally generated structures and something, and a lot of them are kind of over the top, so you know, I'll develop like a first version, and then I'll say, well, what happens if I let it get a little out of control? What happens if it gets a little bigger? And you know, uh, you know I sort of go wild with that. I'm like, okay, now even bigger. So yeah. I always tell my players they're not mistakes, they're features. We do the same thing. Um, we might shoot a, a, a wither skull out of a fireball instead, and we're like, wait a minute, this is pretty cool. So. <laughs> uh, mistakes. Yes, sir. Yes, this a little bit of a technical question. What uh, language are you guys writing your code in? And um, also, are there some available um, you know, utility, library utilities that you kind of use, standard utilities? Uh, I believe for most of us, we're probably writing in Java. Uh, recently, we've also had the ability to write in a language called Scala or Scala. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, and we actually do end up having a lot of utility libraries come um, with, uh, with Minecraft itself now, as well as uh, Forge offers some extra ones as well. I think Java is pretty much it. <laughs> All right then. Right, let's start on this microphone right over here. Young man in the green shirt. Um, I had a question for Pahama. I've seen you, like, I had a question about EE3. I've seen lots of bugs, um, features added, <laughs> and I want to know what you had in store. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I want to know, like, what ideas do you have for EE3? So for EE3, what I really want to add is I want, uh, I want a mod that will work well with a, leather, a lot of other mods, and I want to have some really cool combat later on. I think there's a lot of fun magic combat that we could probably add to the game. So that's what I'd like to add. Okay. Personally, I want to add bacon. <laughs> All right, let's start with the next young man right there in the dark shirt. All right, so I've downloaded many mods on, for, uh, like on a website that ended up connecting with Forge. But eventually what happened, I downloaded so many mods that Forge is no longer working with my Minecraft. Is there any way to fix that? <laughs> Stack traces. <laughs> Typically, it's a configuration issue, or you downloaded the wrong Minecraft or mod for the wrong Minecraft version. Permgen. Permgen. Basically, hop on our forums, stick your stack trace up there. It's a log file in your mods or Minecraft folder, and we'll help you out. And what website is that? Minecraftforge.net. There you go. <laughs> Yay, mods. All right, you. All right, this is directed to anybody that knows LRM in any way. Do you think she will ever continue Red Power 2 or possibly develop Red Power 3? I'll take this one. <laughs> um, top secret. I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. I see. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And this gentleman over here. Which vanilla Minecraft update was the hardest to uh, update to? And uh, what, 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 what do you think like, characterizes why an update would be hard to move to? <laughs> I'm giving that to CPW. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
the one that's just come out is <laughs> by far the hardest one we've ever had to deal with. It's going to beat 1.3 into the ground, which was the previous hardest. Uh, 1.7 is massive. Uh, the amount of code that has changed in 1.7 is vast, uh, which means that Surge, Dex, and myself uh, are going to take a very long time to reverse engineer from the obfuscation to uh, something that's going to be usable for mods. That's pretty much why it takes a very long time. Honestly, I don't envy the amount of work that they have to put into fixing mods, but I love what they produce in the end. I think there's so much love that goes into the mods that, you know, and you can find anything you want. You can make the game into anything you want with the mods that you find. And, you know, I think we owe them a lot for that. Okay, let's see. Next question, you. How do you feel about the development of Project Red, and do you think it'll ever appear on Forgecraft? <laughs> Honestly, myself, I haven't looked too much into it, but it is on my to-do list to investigate it more and to, to talk to Chicken Bones, who's the developer of... Uh, it's Chicken Bones that did Project Red, right? One of them. One of them, yes. There's another one as well. Um, and I, I just would like to have a look at it before I go and add it to the server. <laughs> is that your phone, sir? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you over there. How do you come up with most of your mod ideas? I usually think, how can I kill my players in the most <laughs> violent way possible while they still have fun? <laughs> uh, for the Twilight Forest, uh, maybe it's not very surprising that, you know, like long walks in the woods uh, are sort of like a large thinking ground for me, uh, just sort of wandering around, thinking what would be cool. Um, I have sort of a plan. I keep uh, sort of a master plan together of things that I plan to work on, any cool ideas I've ever had, uh, and sort of slowly progress through that. People tend to just keep suggesting features, and my instinct is normally to say no to all of them, but sometimes they'll plant themselves in my mind, and after a while, I'll think about them and think, yeah, that would be quite nice, and I'll go ahead and implement them. All right, let's go to the young man over here in the dark shirts. What is the weirdest slash funniest mod you have ever seen? Oh. Weirdest or funniest mod you've ever seen? I can definitely chime in on the Nyan Pig mod by iTunes. <laughs> 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 Where you can ride a flying pig that shoots rainbows behind him. <laughs> I'll trail mix. It's actually called trail mix. I'll add to that one. Probably any mod by iChun yeah. is oh, that, probably. Sorry, that's, uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. He's a mad genius. <laughs> he is. <laughs> All right. And you, sir? This is for the guy with Shopo. What challenges are with developing stuff for like Mind Z and Mind Z guns? Um, there's a lot of challenges. One of them is that, you know, MindZ is about a year and a half old now, and so it's, and now it's grown into, I think we have two million players who've played, who have played it, and, and it's trying to manage, there's everything that I do affects every player who's already played it, and like their current progress, and I mean, imagine if I released an update and that just like wiped out everybody's progress, yeah, that would be not fun. So that's a big one uh, for that, and then as far as like the MindZ guns is dealing with the the old code, mixing it with new code, and resisting the temptation to completely rewrite it. <laughs> All right, next up is a gentleman in the dark shirt right there. Um, this is directed towards general modders. Um, I remember Direwolf talking a while ago about having a uh, system where you can make <coughs> essentially a save of your world and return to it in-game. How feasible would that possibly be? I, th I think I remember that. That was the time travel mod, right? Where I could yeah. go back in time. <laughs> Rolling back the world is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but aren't there mods that might do it, at least in single player? They can do it in single player, but once you start getting into the server world, it becomes incredibly hard to uh, maintain a coherent state across lots of things. 
Uh, if you've ever seen red power frames from Melaram, there's an example of where stuff can go really, really badly wrong if you're not careful. Um, there's a very large amount of thought I've put into trying to do this. Uh, it might happen eventually. <laughs> All right, and you? What's the easiest part about making a mod? N nothing. <laughs> the easiest part is like a thinking up the names because you just take a noun and add the word craft on the end. <laughs> That's a good answer. All right, you sir. Pretty much following of what that lady said. Um, what? What is harder? Other world mods like the Twilight Forest. Or Bob Mosses, Bob Moss, Mob Bosses, or developing a new, a new weapon. Uh, well, I mean, thanks to uh, Lex's efforts on Forge, other world mods are fairly easy. Uh, it's uh, he's made it very simple to set up new dimensions and uh, other things like that. Bosses. Bosses can be tough, um, you know, like it's, it's actually surprisingly hard designing them. Coding them is usually just like sort of straightforward. I want it to do this, so I tell it to do this. But, you know, designing them so they're a fun challenge to the player and not overwhelmingly difficult or, you know, just a pushover is really sort of the harder part of it. Awesome. You there. What was the hardest mod you ever had to make? <laughs> yes, um, like we've heard a, a couple of people say it up here. The first one is definitely the hardest because you're often learning while you're doing it. Um, and you'll, you'll write something the first time, you'll come back to it a couple months later and you just re you realized how much you've learned in that time. I would just say that uh, maintaining Forge and FML, I think, is the hardest mod I've had to work on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you in the hat. Oh. Do you think that Minecraft is the easiest Java game to mod in? It is the only Java game that you can mod. <laughs> I don't know that there is another Java game out there that is anywhere near as popular. Um, but Java definitely helped. Uh, I think if it was written in any other language, there would not be a modding community that there is. All right, and next over here. Um, what modding program would you recommend for new modders? Like an IDE? The actual programming program. Well, you can get like a, you can get like I, I use a IntelliJ IDEA to write my code, and what it's cool, what's cool about it is it like writes your code for you. Yeah, like basically all you've got to do is kind of sit there and you start typing. Okay, it doesn't really write your code for you, but <laughs> <laughs> but it, it kind of it like auto completes, and you know if I start typing uh, PL, it'll like auto complete the player, and then you know whatever. But uh, I'm sure you guys probably use a plethora of different tools and utilities and things, but yeah, just, I don't know, find the Java tutorial? Yeah, we use, um, I'm using Eclipse. Uh, I think Lex uses Eclipse, uh, but others use, use other tools. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You're there. What do I do to fix my, what do I, oh my God. What do I do to um, fix my, um, Mac. I was using Red Power Frames in an elevator, and I kind of died in it, and now I can't use my Mac anymore. I died in, a red, in using Red Power Frames. Like I would say probably restore from backup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you there. Um, how did the um, modding community kind of form, I guess, and how do you find 
I guess this part is more directed to Direwolf, and how do you find new mods to play and use? Well, I find new mods to play and use mostly by looking at the Minecraft forums and also through word of mouth. Lots of people now will send me messages and say, hey, look at this new mod you have to check out. One of them, for example, that I haven't gotten to yet, Ender.io, everybody keeps telling me I have to check that mod out, so that sounds pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much how I check out new ones nowadays. Um, and as for the modding community, I think most of us kind of just got together as we were communicating on IRC and, and getting to know each other playing together with the mods. Pahimar can probably touch on that a little bit better. I just want to add on a personal note that it blows my mind how fast word of mouth spreads for mods. It, it's incredible. You, sir. What was the hardest single entity block or item you ever coded? And will there be condensers in EE3? Because <laughs> we really need those. You're on the spot, Pahimar. Pahimar, would you like me to take that last question for you? <laughs> The hardest block is the, like, a turtle, because it, it's like the entire mod in one block. And you'll get something similar. <laughs> All right, and you? Um, yes, I'd like to know about your process for making a mod, both uh, design and programming. Well, usually, uh, when, when, before you plan anything, you want a design document so that you actually have a concrete like look of what you want. Um, and it will probably be a living document, but that the first step is to actually have a design document. And then you can actually, if you have multiple staff or helpers, uh, they can you know take where they want and then they just kind of continue. But I'm sure everyone else has a different view. Uh, mine usually starts, we're sitting in like our, our staff mumble channel for like adminning our server and one of the players in chat will say, hey, you guys should do this. And then one of the admins will be like, oh, that'd be so funny if we added it. And then I'm like, no, that's impossible. And then it all go, goes quiet for a couple of hours. And then I come back and say, hey, I need you guys to test something. <laughs> like I said earlier, I keep notebooks filled with ideas for monsters or new blocks or new uh, other things to add. And, you know, I'll sort of sift through them from time to time and say, oh, well, that looks possible, or no, I don't think I can really even manage to do that yet. Uh, and, you know, so I'll pick one and I'll just start coding and uh, see, see how it develops. I tend to think about the kind of things that I would currently like to build with, like, the mod and can't at the moment and try and think of like the smallest features that I could add that will enable the new things to be built and hopefully enable lots of new things. It's all about like a multiplying the, um, the, the possibilities because when, when, when you're making a, a sandbox creative game game like Minecraft, I think. Adding all the things. <laughs> all right, you there. Two things. Direwolf, why do you not have a Minecraft skin? <laughs> because I play with so many mods, I want people to know I'm actually playing Minecraft still. <laughs> also, it's kind of just become my thing. I always played single player for a while, and um, I never needed a skin. And then when I got into multiplayer, everybody kind of knew that I had a Steve skin, so I feel like it would be kind of a betrayal now to actually get one. <laughs> and the second thing, will there ever be a public version of Forgecraft? Not exactly, but the FTB Mod Pack 164 will have all the mods that are on Forgecraft right now, just their public release ones. There is a Forgecraft 3 Mod Pack out there, and I'd yes. like to see if we can do one for Forgecraft 2 as well, which is uh, the last one that's got a ton of mods on it. So we will, we will be trying for that. Excellent. You, sir. Um, have you ever made a redstone invention including command blocks? I actually have not, no. I'd, I haven't really gotten into command blocks much, but it's something I would like to check out at some point. What we need is a mod that adds them to survival, and then I'd be all about it. <laughs> no, uh, when I first heard about command blocks, the first thing I did was made a button that when you press it, it would kill the player, which I'm sure most of you did. <laughs> I don't feel so bad, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir. Okay, my first question would be um, directed at CPW and Lex Manos. Um, 
I would just like to ask if either of you have realized how much, how many third party launchers that you guys are killing with um, <laughs> Forge. <laughs> Such as MC Patcher. You're killing them. We actually don't kill MC Patcher. It works quite well. It's also not a launcher. It's a patcher. True. Um, they've, they've, uh, they've worked around It has a couple of, stuff. the way MC Patcher works is it does dynamic injection into the code. And because we don't ship actual modified classes, we ship binary patches, they had to adapt to that. It's just one of the things we like to do to try and respect Mojang's wishes. Um, the vast majority of launchers that we break are ones that don't follow the standard that the Mojang launcher has put into place. As long as it works up exactly like the Mojang launcher for actually starting Minecraft, then it should work perfectly fine with Forge. All right. Um, and, uh, sorry, were you going to say something? I just wanted to add that um, the uh, I did try and reach out to the MC Patcher guy, um, and he never really responded to me, so I was trying to work with him to try and resolve some of these issues, but uh, he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, respond, so. Okay, and um, my second question would be to all of you. I would just like to ask, how many of you have autism, and if so, has it helped you in your modding career? Now don't ever personal speak thing up to at ask once. them. Yeah. I think we're going to refuse that question. I think. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to have to pass on that one. Sorry. All right, you, sir. Um, I. Ah, sorry. Wrong, wrong thing. Um, what advice do you have for young people who want to start modding? Really, I would just, um, you gotta dive in. Uh, if it's something you're interested in, it, it'll come as, as more you actually use it. So um, it's gonna be long hours and it's gonna be a lot of researching, but there's a lot of guys to get you started. I would say start small, just download um, like, a, like a Forge and, and, and just like a follow a tu tutorial or something to get your development environment up and running. That's the hurdle you have to get over. But once you've done that, just pick something really small you'd like to see and try and get that done. And hopefully the, 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 the initial, the, like a joy of that once you see something you made in the game will spur you on to do the rest. Yeah. And don't be afraid to ask for help. There's lots of people out there who would more than be happy to help you if you have any technical questions or you're looking for how to do something. Uh, they, I myself, I, I particularly love teaching new people how to mod, um, so please feel free to ask for help and we'll be there to help. Yeah, I, I will just say, uh, if, you, if you wish to do a Forge mod, uh, I do recommend you start with Pahemar's Let's Mod series. Well, and, uh, I want to stress Dan 200's uh, pick something and get it done. Finish your first project that you pick, because if you start it and you give up halfway through, that can be one of the one of the biggest detriments to your motivation to even do something. But yeah, pick something small and get it done. All right, you sir. Um, what was the hardest thing, like hardest thing you've ever encountered while modding? Thank you. Well, I, I know from a bucket perspective, um, heroes actually had to revert and use their own hit point system. So. Uh, that would, it took months to actually fix, uh, but it wasn't really, it was something with 1.0 that came out that they brought out boss health, and we had to respect that, and it, it created a lot of problems, so the change, changes with the code you have to kind of run with, and so that's probably it. I would say the Hydra in Twilight Forest is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> For my part, I would say that, you know, it's hardest when you have a great idea and then you just start going into the code and you find out that it's just not going to work. Like that can sometimes just be such, 
such a downer when you're like, this would be really great, but there's no way I can get at that code. It's just like locked away. And Lex and uh, CPW have been doing great in resolving those kind of situations. And then um, also, what is the relationship between Forge mod loader and Resolami mod loader? Sorry, Sorry could you repeat that? What is the relationship between Resurami's mod loader and Forge? Okay, um, so <laughs> <laughs> FML started out as a an alternative implementation of mod loader by Resurami, um, and the goal was to create a completely open source implementation uh, that wasn't completely bound by uh, the complexities of his licensing. Um, it also had the benefit of supporting both the server, the client, and originally Bucket as well. Um, and from there, it sort of ballooned and grew. Um, and at this point, I think we are, we are saying goodbye to that part of the uh, code. Uh, Rizugami uh, has not updated his code, so I think that uh, at this point, we're going to be uh, saying goodbye to him and his support in 1.7. All right, you. Um, two questions. Oh, it's directed to Dan. Do you think Hello. there's any possibility of another programming language in computer craft, such as BASIC? Um, it, it, it would be possible. Um, it would be a lot of work, and I don't actually think it would be a good idea, because it would, um, it would split the community in two, and the any kind of like getting help or learning the mod would be that much difficult because half the resources that, 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 that you'd find would be for the other language. And it, it helps to have a single way, way through that everyone learns the same stuff. And my second question, um, do you think there's a possibility for a programming competition for, um, between you guys and my friend? <laughs> a Computer craft programming competition, or just um, any any programming language? Oh, anything's possible. <laughs> I recommend Lisp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new. Um, have any game-changing mods for Minecraft have ever became their own games, like The Legend of Notch? Sorry, what was the question? Are there hey, any we games? said if any of the mods created w eventually became independent games of their own. I'm not aware of any yet. Yeah, I don't know that I've heard I of think any. There's a few in the pipeline that uh, are sort of evolving in that direction, but I don't think that they want publicity yet. So. All right, and you, sir. Um, so if we wanted to start modding, would you just recommend us to just go and start writing code or would you want us to like do a lot of tutorials or like what would you do? YouTube tutorial, follow it closely. Don't depart from anything that you're told. And then, uh, and then at the end you can look at what you made and be like, wow, that's awesome. And then follow another YouTube tutorial and follow another and then change little things as you go. And then, uh, and then eventually you start writing your own code and you don't even realize it. Okay. Um, and also like, would you want to like? Would you recommend to like find a mod that we like and try and recreate it, or like just make something new? I, I would s probably make something new, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. trying to recreate something else can be a little bit frustrating because then you haven't really created much at the end. You end up kind of falling. You either fall short or you end up just kind of duplicating. Or I mean, if you can advance it, that'd be cool. Okay. It's probably also a mod that you would want to recreate is probably a big successful mod that's already had hundreds of hours put into it, and that's a lot to bite off for a first go, so it goes, kind of goes against the idea of starting small, achieve things quickly. Now, there's an awful lot of open source mods out there as well that are definitely really good resources for when you're looking to learn how to do this as well. Buildcraft is a good example. <laughs> All right, your question, sir. Um, my first question is to ask, what do you guys use for your image editing or texture making? I myself used GIMP. The, like a GNU image manipulation program. That would be the one. Yeah, I like GIMP too. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. MS Paint. <laughs> Over 10,000 hours. 
my second question is, do you, for the Forge developers, do you maybe see yourself making a mod installer or a website where you can just click install and it'll install the mod to make it more easier for people who have trouble? But it's just at the moment to install a mod is you put a file in a folder. It's like you drag it from one side of the screen to the other. It's, a, it's hard to think how, they, how that could be simplified. Well, in 1.7, we're trying to promote modders to design their mods and release them in a standard format. Right now, it's, oh, I put this on Mediafire, go shove it in a folder, which is easy to use, but hard to create those installer websites and hard to list them all in a single place. Uh, I'm speaking with the FTB team and other uh, mod pack creators and launchers and other systems like that to try and promote a standard for modders to follow so that we can eventually do something similar to that. Okay. Excellent. Next question. What is the best mod you have ever played in the worst mod? <laughs> That's not a dangerous question at all. Um, probably my favorite mod was uh, Equivalent Exchange 2. <laughs> that was going to be my answer. That's actually the mod that got me into this, so it's, it's going to be hard for me to say that uh, wasn't the best mod. He was just crazy. The worst mod, uh, I don't know, I was, try I was trying to play the uh, Adventure Time mod, and it's, uh, it's not much fun at the moment. They need to fix that. <laughs> my favorite mod will always and forever be the Portal Gun mod. I always have trouble picking what my favorite mod is because it changes every week because I'll be excited about one mod and I'll be excited about another one and then I just, I don't know, I, there's just so many of them out there, it's hard to pick a favorite for me. I've had a lot of fun with uh, mods like uh, Thomcraft, which is in, what, like three now, as well as uh, ones like Better Than Wolves or uh, you know other sort of mods that change the mechanics of the game I like. I love all my children the same. I really like the uh, the mod pack for uh, Hexit. I don't know if you guys heard of it. That one's nice. All right, your question, sir. Hi, I have a question about uh, equivalent exchange. I understand getting rid of the condensers just because they were overpowered, but why get rid of uh, dark matter and red matter? Well, dark ma matter was never going to go away, but um, Recently, I've decided I'm going to add, uh, so we have dark matter and red matter, I'm going to add another five. So that's coming in a, at a later update, so. Will there be blue matter and green matter? And <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, we've got time for just one more question. You, sir. Um, what is the difference between modding a Forge single player mod and modding a Forge multiplayer mod? That's a beautiful question. There really shouldn't be any difference at all. Uh, I know that there are some mods that are pretty much exclusively client side, like map, uh, mini map mods, but otherwise, mods should be the same for both single and multiplayer these days. Uh, that was one of the goals of the 1.3 conversions. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up because we are out of time. Thanks, everybody, for coming to the modding panel. Be sure to enjoy the rest of your stay at Minecon. By the way, there will be a meet and greet for the modders if you want to see them later today at 5 p.m. The, the location will be announced later on, so be sure to keep an ear out for that. And have a good day. <laughs>